everybody ready? We'll go ahead at least and you can call us to order and get into, uh, clo into our session. All right. Good evening and welcome to the special called meeting of the Stafford County School Board beginning at 6.30 on Tuesday, November 10th. I um, will look to my right and we'll go and introduce ourselves as part of our roll call. Patricia Healy, Rock Hill District. Susan Randall, George Washington District. Holly Hazard, Hartwood District. Pamela Young, Garrisonville. Elizabeth Warner, Griffiths Whitewater. Sarah Chase, Falmouth. All right, we have uh, six of seven, so we have a quorum. Can we move on and um, have approval of the uh, meeting agenda? I move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any um, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Our next session does would will put us into closed session. Is there a motion? Madam Chairman, I move that the Stafford County School Board convene a closed meeting pursuant to section 2.2-3711A3 of the Code of Virginia to discuss and or consider the acquisition of real property for the construction of high school number six. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We are in closed session. So any that are not involved in the closed session, school board, that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the school board of Stafford County hereby certifies to the best of each member's knowledge one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification applies. And two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, Ms. Hall, can you pull the board? Dr. Chase. Aye. Ms. Hazard? Aye. Ms. Healy? Yes. Ms. Hall, yes. Agreed. Ms. Randall? Yes. Dr. Warner? Yes. Aye. Motion passes. We are um, out of our closed session. Uh, we, I'm going to close this special called meeting and we will reconvene in four minutes and start our meeting at 710.
Good evening and welcome to the November 10th regular meeting of the Stafford County School Board. Again, I will ask, um, I'll go to my left this time and we will introduce ourselves as part of our roll call. Uh, Sarah Chase, Falmouth District. Elizabeth Warner, Griffiths Wildwater District. Pamela Young, Garrisonville. Holly Hazard, Hartwood District. Irene Hollerback, the Aquia District. Susan Randall, George Washington District. And Trisha Healy, Rock Hill District. All right, we have a uh, full quorum this evening. Next on the agenda is our um, approval. Move to approve the Second. agenda. Been moved and seconded. Any additions or deletions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, in our one of our favorite things is our awards and recognitions. I'd like to um, bring up Ms. Hunter, uh, Mr. Berry up here to tell us um, about some recognitions we have for our community members. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Dr. Kisner. I'm here this evening to thank and recognize the community partners and members who helped support the Operation Warm More Than a Coat campaign to raise more than $30,000 for students in need of a new winter coat. Community collaboration and partnership is key to the success of Operation War. We especially wish to thank the Stafford County Fire and Rescue Department under the leadership of Chief Cardello and Mountain View Fire and Safety Association under the leadership of Volunteer Fire Chief Mark Doyle. Thank you to the volunteers and staff who sorted more than Thank you to the volunteers and staff who sorted more than 1,200 new coats on Wednesday, October 28th at Mountain View Fire Station. Their time ensured students in need received their new winter coats before winter begins. Thank you to the community members and anonymous individuals who donated to this year's campaign. At this time, I would like to recognize the community partners who supported Operation War. Certificates of recognition will be mailed to each of the partners. American Legion Post 290, Augustine Golf Club, Falmouth Fire Department, Ferry Farm Baptist Church, Mission Barbecue, Pierpoint Construction, Rotary Club of Stafford, Stafford Crossing Community Church, Stafford Education Foundation, Stafford Ruritan Club, Topside Federal Credit Union, Transurban, the Wawa Foundation, and White Oak Volunteer Fire Department. Thank you all for your support. In addition, this evening, I would like to thank, Mike, you can go to the next slide. I would like to recognize the generous donations by two community partners. The Rotary Club of Stafford donated $4,500 to purchase eBooks for the SOAR Virtual Library. In previous years, the Rotary Club has supported students by providing dictionary donations to all third grade students. However, to support the new learning environments, the Rotary Club chose to provide a donation for purchasing eBooks this year. I would also like to recognize Sheehy Toyota of Stafford, who donated $26,000 to the division. This generous donation will support CTE fees for disadvantaged students, as well as develop parent support programs and training for English language learners and their families. The donation removes financial barriers, previously limiting disadvantaged students from enrolling in CTE courses and reinforces the importance of CTE programs, which prepare students for career paths through project-based and work-based learning. In addition, the donation will enable English Learner Instruction and the ESOL Welcome Center to assist English language learner families with student fees, provide additional resources for support, and create family workshops and classes. Thank you again to the Rotary Club of Stafford and Sheehy Toyota of Stafford for their generous support. I will tell you, I was at Rocky Run today, and I saw some of the jackets being distributed and the kids were very excited, so thanks. We have great community partners who have really stepped up during this time even more than, than they always have, so. All right, we're moving on to our citizen comments. Each speaker is allotted two minutes. Um, we don't have anybody signed up this evening and looking into the audience, I recognize pretty much every face here that works for Stafford County Public Schools, but if there is somebody here to speak, if you would just raise your hand. Everybody crawling under the... Um. So anyway, then I will um, not read us in for citizen comments since uh, no one is here this evening. Our next item is our board committee reports. 
Um, the um, main report is from our Joint Schools Working Committee. I will give a short overview of, of the meeting. We met last Thursday here in the uh, chambers here. We had all of our six members here and the um, highlights I would say is I thought it was a very good meeting. Uh, we did have some discussion about um, per pupil expenditure and who we should be compared with. Should we be considered with cities? Should we be with counties? And I think eventually we were able to move the, the conversation more to what really makes sense for Stafford. We did um, highlight the um, local share, but the other area that um, I think we all felt very good about was we were talking about the salary scales. and we tasked staff to come up with how should our salary scales and it seemed like we had some general consensus about Prince William County and Spotsylvania maybe not quite yet Fairfax but we're we're working on it but if we start um, with those and I thought that was a positive move of um, a recognition of our comparison <coughs> counties with regard to um, salary scales moving forward we also talked about legislative initiatives that we would like to make sure that the Board of Supervisors is aware of um, remain uh, dealing with cost to compete. Secondly, um, the maintaining of the ADM going forward in next year's budget with with the state. And I thought those were positive moves that we um, would be working uh, together going forward. We will be meeting again um, in December, and I'm sorry I don't have it off the top of my head, but we will be meeting again in December before the close of the school year. December 1st, yeah. 9th. Are you talking about the CIP meeting? No, this was for the Sorry, joint. For the three oh, okay. And I then um, I will make that announcement at the end, though. So that was the Joint uh, Schools Working Committee. Next, we'll move on to board member comments. All right, who wants to go first? I'll be nice tonight. Who wants to start us off? Dr. Casey, thank you. <laughs> so, um, I uh, attended the uh, CGS Governing Board meeting on October 15th. Um, we got a summary of the AP exam results and I'll have that sent to the clerk so she can share it with everybody. Um, there's also plans to change the application again this year to try again to uh, continue with the efforts to um, increase diversity. So uh, what well, one was just Nobody is taking the PSAT 8 this year at, in any of the counties, and so they will be using whatever alternate tests each county gives, so the MAPS or the STAR, or whatever it is. Um, they will no longer use honors and awards as part of the rubric uh, because they feel that that um, may be discriminatory, and then they're going to increase the number of recommendations in the hopes of um, individuals perhaps being able to get recommendations from community members who may know about the students um, in a way that, that teachers may not. And then they'll, they'll accept four and then they will use the top three of the four recommendations. So if you inadvertently pick somebody who for whatever reason gives you a really poor recommendation, that would not be um, part of it. And then um, they, we had a slight budget adjustment. There were four students more than what was uh, predicted. But interestingly, Stafford County had 13 additional students this year. So over what was projected. So they had a higher enrollment in CGS in Stafford this year. Um, Spotsylvania had, had a, uh, about 12 fewer. So all right, that's all I've got. Dr. Warner, do you have Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I'd like to say I've had an opportunity to visit some of our schools and see the hybrid learning program and the internet cafes, and I'm impressed with just how, how effectively our school system and is rising to the challenges, and I'm ex excited to see how many people are moving into alternate assignments and uh, doing such, so with such success. I also, as part of the Head Start Policy Council meeting on the 27th, I would like to congratulate the new uh, chair and vice chair of the parent of, um, of the advisory council, Kaylin Jennings Knight and Ashley Goodman. And I really want to say how much I appreciate how our community partners and parents and grandparents and other support work together to make the Head Start program such a success. Um, there, 
they were proud to announce that they've had a 90% success rate in parents meeting their, achieving their goals this year. I think that the Head Start program certainly led the way in a lot of our decisions as far as opening up the schools and, and instituting the hybrid program. Um, I just want to say thank you again, and that's it. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to welcome K through five back to school. I always felt that this group of students uh, needed to be in school, so I'm happy uh, for Dr. Kisner agreeing to add also the internet cafes in all the schools to ensure that students uh, that did not have access to Wi-Fi are able uh, to come in and, and get access. Um, while I'm very excited uh, to have all of these students back, I am some still virtual, but I'm, I'm still concerned with the high COVID cases and positivity rate. So I'm hoping that everybody continue to mask up, remembering that um, you know, the way how we beat this COVID is to, and to keep the schools open as uh, long as possible, is to ensure that we uh, protect each other distance and um, stay masked. Thank you. Ms. Hollerbeck. I don't really have lots to report, but I do want to um, extend a big thank you to a person who's been fielding a ton of um, emails lately um, from parents and teachers. And I uh, wanted to say thank you, Dr. Kisner. Keep knocking it out of the park. Ms. Randall. Good evening, and thank you, Madam Chair. I would like, uh, today was Ferry Farms' first day, uh, so I got to be there with Dr. Kisner uh, to greet some of the little kids and to say hi to um, a lot of the educators and watch some of the hybrid learning. And gosh, it's just so exciting when you get to see the kids face to face and using paper and pencil. That was just, and laptops closed. I was just oh, loving that. Um, I also wanted to uh, remind everybody on the cabinet and the board that we have an event coming next Thursday. Uh, Missy had sent to hold the date. And um, so I sent everybody a link to sign up with the details of that event. So, um, and I'm willing to be a driver and I hope you like big cars. Thanks. Ms. Healy. Um, I wanted to uh, wish all our staff and families and community members who are veterans a, uh, a happy Veterans Day tomorrow and I hope everyone enjoys their day. I'm sad that we're not in our business as usual school and able to see all these wonderful events that we have um, at every level of our schools and in every one of our schools for veterans. So um, we're, we're thinking about you and I, I certainly want to extend my personal appreciation. Thank you. And happy birthday to the U.S. Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to just um, make a couple comments. First, again, our community partners. Um, I know that we have come and recognized some tonight, but just the outreach from our community of how they can help has been just really amazing. And I just want to say to those who have volunteered and or said, what can we do? How can we be there? We are really blessed with an amazing community who wants to support our schools. And I look forward to this continuing, certainly post COVID, but also as we as a board have identified, we have some concerns or um, growths that may be coming in the future. And so we wanna just continue to solidify those wonderful partnerships. But I really wanna thank those who have uh, reached out uh, in, the, in the past couple months. Um, Next Tuesday night is the Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, we voted at our meeting last, um, last well, two weeks ago, I guess, um, about a uh, stipend for our, um, for our school staff. I would like to just reiterate again the huge investment and change in job description that many of our teachers have experienced. It is not teaching itself, it is how to teach, how to reach, and it is different this year and as I said uh, previously, I understand many different careers have um, been impacted by COVID but I would say that the teaching profession and schools are by far the most impacted and the most changed and I really 
hope that um, the Board of Supervisors will support our request using funds from the school district to support a stipend for our, um, for our staff who have worked tirelessly and I know have spent many nights um, and hours trying to deliver the best um, educational experience that they can and many of them have hit it out of the park and also you know have have been there for our students and for each other so again I really hope that that is something that our community will recognize is important um, going forward and then last I would just like to make a comment about growth going forward I know that I have this is so much a topic we have talked about pre-COVID and I think many people believe that um, during this COVID time we are going probably in the opposite direction. Just would like to tell um, everybody that pre-COVID at this point a year ago, our house starts were 631. Post-COVID, we have 639. Home sales, 1723 last year, 2041 this year. Average days of a house on the market in Stafford County was 39 a year ago. It is now 23. I'm just making that aware that we need to be planning for growth and for our students to be coming back and for our students to be in buildings. Um, a virtual model is a very enticing and, and, and model that we are needing to use now and maybe something that goes forward. But I would say the majority of the families or at least the ones that reach out to me is they will be in these buildings for the foreseeable future until their children graduate like mine did and we cannot lose sight of that fact going forward. So just wanted to share that with you tonight. And um, Dr. Kisner. Thank you. Uh, just a few things. I do want to reiterate what some of you said and Ms. Young talked about. Um, there's no question that our community is seeing an increase of COVID-19 and Usually the whole state is, but let's just talk about Stafford. So, you know, we collect data and we review the data and we, uh, tomorrow morning, we will update our last week's data. It takes us a little while to get things from uh, the health department. And then also um, we do, a, I think, an excellent job, Colette and her team, of contact tracing. I bring that up is because um, our mitigation strategies at school are working very well. And what we're noticing is that two things. One, there are some events that are taking place in the community that uh, people unfortunately then um, become positive. Um, and so then we have to react to it. But I also think there's a positive part, and what could be positive about that, is that a lot of parents have contacted us to let us know what's going on in their home. And we, and we really appreciate that. So if a parent is tested positive and they have a child, they let us know that they're keeping the child home, but then we still have to follow our procedure. So the open communication, I think, is, is very important. So we don't want, in a sense, to create like a chilling experience where people are going to be identified as doing something wrong. You know, but, um, you know, masks and social distancing and, and you know we're going into Thanksgiving, and you, know, you hear about family events, and then the weather's been amazing this last week. But I hear it may eventually become fall than winter, um, and so you know we'll all be indoors. So I just hope people will um, you know continue to follow the best practices. I will also say that we're beginning, we're, we're stop uh, losing children. Um, we're seeing children our enrollment go back up. We actually are over the 2,900 number again, um, and uh, which is good. We anticipate, if you read today's VSBA thing, they had an article about Fairfax County Schools, and we're seeing a similar profile. High school, we actually went up. Middle school, we lost about 50, 60 kids. I'm giving you about two weeks old data, just so you know, October 23rd data. Um, but the elementary is where we saw the greatest <clears throat> loss, and mainly kindergarten. Um, but we're beginning now, I think, has some to do with the hybrid model starting, um, families coming back. So um, Lyle Noel and his team are working on enrollment projections, 
and the best practices from people in his position throughout the state and honestly looking at other um, states also is to use a 10-year rolling average but to recognize that this year was probably an outlier okay and and um, so that's there's three models but I just want to let you know that uh, the good news is we were reporting earlier you know losing 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 and that trend has reversed okay so that's a, um, a very positive thing um, anyway that's all I'll say thank you thank you Um, consent items. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any um, questions or concern about any of the three items? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously, approving 8.012 and 3. Moving on to our information items. Our first item is regarding the school, um, school year calendar. And we have this on for information for two weeks to provide um, the ability for input from our stakeholders. Are there any questions since either since last meeting or questions about the calendar um, that's uh, the, that are presented? Yes, Ms. Randall. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to say that I did receive um, some excellent feedback and uh, one of the things that came up was why are we starting three weeks early? Why are we so early? I just wanted to uh, let people know that if you, when you look at the start, you also have to look at the end. And the end date was chosen so that it would be done um, before they, we leave for the winter break. So when students come back, uh, teachers have a day for their, themselves to get their next uh, semester, year, however it is uh, for them, set up, and then the students come back in for the new year in a new semester. But sometimes people got hung up on that first date and just didn't look at the end date. So I just wanted to clarify that, and I really do appreciate the feedback. Madam Chair, and just looking at um, what's on their agenda, I'm not sure if that's what's Gonna, are they going to put that on the screen? It looks like they dropped a line <laughs> because this shows December 17th is spring break, March is graduation. And it's, so if, if this is going to be published on our website, we need to make sure that we show these dates accurately. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the seniors might not mind graduating in <laughs> March, especially since we have a whole week to graduate, but I uh, want to make sure we're, we're transparent. <laughs> Thank you. Just real quickly, um, we've received about 20, 24 comments through different communication. Thursday, I have my parent and staff advisory. It's been uh, pretty much everybody's <clears throat> been positive. Some people would like a longer summer break. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. I would like a long summer break. Um, so, um, but that uh, you requested and we distributed and, and we tweeted it out and we did a whole bunch of things. Um, so um, next month uh, we'll compile and see if there's anything that's you know, significant for your consideration. Yeah, just, no, it's just a comment. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I, I just wanted to know, Dr. Kisser, I know you put the calendar and everything on the website. Um, my only concern is usually for those parents that are not in tune, like if they're working, um, they depend on their students giving them that information. I mean, they may not go on vacation like everyone else, but they still, um, they still need to know. And I was wondering how we plan to. We, we sent out the calendar to everybody. Okay. This Friday's letter. Okay. We sent out again, so we send it out multiple ways. Via email. Yeah. That's the problem. But okay. All right. Hearing no more comments on the calendar, let's move on to the professional development uh, policy. As I understood, this is um, was. Um, dictated by state law, but it seemed like we, or 
new new legislation, but it appears that we are already complying with that. But is any additional comments or concerns? Ms. Randall. Is this a, um, a um, professional development that will happen every year, or is this a one-time thing, or is it just updated each year, or how is this done? Yeah, so this was a new law passed, and the expectation is that this is an ongoing professional development annually. Yeah. All right. If, excuse me, Good. Madam Chairman. If, if that's the case, then we should be clear in this policy, because the way I read it, it just says at least once. It doesn't say per, per <coughs> school year, per calendar year, whatever. So right. if, if, we, if that is the intention, then we, we need to have that clear to avoid any um, confusion on the part of, of staff in the future. Perhaps when that comes back to us, that can be clarified. And, and I would suggest we track the, the law, which is what we usually do with our policy changes, unless we want to go beyond that. But traditionally, when these come up for changes in, in the, the state <coughs> code, you know, that, that's the explanation that, that's given to us. We need to change our policy to be in conformance with the, with the state code. Is there a thought that there will be additional costs to this particular? It seemed like this is already incorporated in our budget, but um, is, is just so that we know for future. Is there a question annually? I think it's going to additional costs to make the changes <coughs> to professional development. Well, we, we do this professional development annually anyway. It's, right. just, it's just memorializing what we actually already do. Uh, That's how I read it. I just was saying if we did need to um, to allocate additional funds to meet this requirement, we should very much be clear when we go to the Board of Supervisors. I know many times we are grilled on what is required and what isn't required. I w wouldn't mind, um, and I will defer this to the FAB, but if we want to put when they ask about professional development, which has come up in the past, we may now okay, asterisk, I don't know, whatever word you want to say, and say that that is um, part of um, required cost. Not, please know that I'm not saying that we don't need it, but I'm just saying when we are defending some of the costs, uh, let's make that um, cl clear that um, this is required training and necessary. Not <laughs> but. All right, moving on to the... Um, Proposed school board governance structuring and approval of revisions to the policy. Um, I will uh, defer that to the board if we would like any uh, additional discussion, which we may do at our um, board retreat. event retreat, whatever um, in in December. We we may carve out a portion of time to talk about this again. Is that? Yeah, I just had one thing, which was sure. it looked like we had talked in the work session about just having two subcommittees, mm -hmm. but then what's here is still three, so I just didn't know if that was just the earlier document or was there <coughs> now a desire to do three. Yeah. We haven't had an additional meeting since then, so I left everything for open until we can come to retreat and we decide how we want to go forward. All right, anybody wanting to go back to high school, 10.04 for our high school program of studies, high school course catalog. Are there any uh, particular questions or is there any comment or presentation on that? Just wanted to check, or, or Dr. Chase, if you want to get us started. Yeah, that. just, just um, channeling my uh, Mrs. Healy here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I noticed uh, there was reference to the VDOE and then the VBOE. Mm -hmm. So is there a Virginia Board of Education as well as the Virginia Department of Education are they or was that just a typo? I just wasn't sure what that was Let's see. Come on down. Yes, Dr. Warner there is a Board of Education and a Department of Education. Oh, sorry, Dr. Okay. <laughs> Board of Education and a Department of Education. 
Okay, and so they do different, it just was like, like there'd be two lines with VDOE and then there'd be a couple lines with VBOE and I just didn't know what, yeah. yeah. Okay. The cool. Board of Education stand, sets the standards of accreditation, the standards of quality, the Department of Education implements it. Great, terrific. Okay, um, good evening, members of the board, Dr. Kisner. Um, I take a moment to wish our Marine families a happy 245th <laughs> birthday today and all of our military families a happy Veterans Day tomorrow. In your uh, agenda packet, you should have received a copy of the program of studies, as well as a table of changes that um, we made this year. The process this year was similar to past years, just done virtually. Uh, I coordinated on behalf of learning and organizational development, and we began by first looking at policies from the Virginia Board of Education, as well as the Virginia Department of Education. Uh, you can see those in the table of changes. Those things are highlighted in yellow. A lot of work with school leadership, including counseling directors, as well as instructional leadership, the Office of Equity and Accountability, and student services to incorporate their input on those changes. So some of the new changes um, are two new courses that are added. We didn't add a whole lot of courses in our current situation, but two of them came from, from the Virginia Department of Education. The first is African American history. This is a VDOE created elective that they are piloting in several schools throughout the state right now. And in the spring, they will be releasing a curriculum outline and an instructor's guide, as well as the online modules that they are piloting throughout the state right now. Um, and we'll work with teachers to develop a local curriculum around that once you've approved it and the state sends out the resources. The other one is the work-based internship. This moves us towards the Virginia profile of a graduate in which the vision is that kids will be able to earn high school credit through work-based experiences. And so we've added in an internship where students would be able to go and do an independent study as part of an internship and get high school credit for that. Um, along with that same line is that we are expanding opportunities to identify more work-based learning uh, courses. Those are identified by a little black triangle uh, throughout the course catalog. Um, this, the new standards of quality add a high quality work-based experience as one of those things to meet the advanced course requirement. So all students have to take at least an AP, an IB, a DE, an honors, but they can also now do a high quality work-based learning experience. And so those courses that we have identified so far uh, as meeting those expectations are identified. Um, students can also get a, uh, career and technical credential to meet that requirement as well. Some other changes that we have, um, some adjustments to course titles and hours and some of those kinds of things from the VDOE. The Virginia Board of Education um, did a new uh, STEMS graduation seal that is replacing the mathematics and technology seal. Uh, so those students who do excel at mathematics and technology and other things can now get that STEM seal. Um, and then we added in a section to describe our new Teachers for Tomorrow program that we're doing in partnership with Germana and the University of Mary Washington. Um, and so we've outlined that and explained that better in this new program of studies. And then once again, you can see all the major changes in that table of changes. Um, and so if you have any questions, I thank you for your time and I'll be more than happy uh, to answer any questions that I can. Ms. Randall. Um, thank you. I, I had a couple of questions, actually. So for the Teach Tomorrow, you said uh, you have uh, a, a memo, MOU currently with uh, GCC and UMW. Right. But I remember Dr. Kisner mentioning not too long ago that we're working with or working towards uh, VCU, GMU, but is that for this or is that for something else? You're talking about the dual enrollment classes? I don't know. I, do, I thought you said that you were trying to work towards working with um, education departments in other schools to get other. Yeah, so, <coughs> so I so didn't know if that would be associated with this or is that, I'm sorry, associated with something else. Yeah, for, for the Teach for Tomorrow, we're working with these two schools. Okay. But there is a, a hope that school systems will be able to negotiate with local community college to get a better rate for the uh, course. Um, okay. Credits, but okay. Yeah. Okay, and the other thing is, um, pre-COVID, um, I, I had talked with uh, Dr. Kisner, 
and with uh, Vernon Green that he was working with a cybersecurity program or a pilot program at North Stafford where I guess the cybersecurity curriculum wasn't always up to something that would be uh, certifiable cybersecurity, I guess. And he was going to work with the educators, train the educators, you know, and pilot some intern and experiential opportunities. Is, is that part of this or is that something separate or I'm not sure if I'm asking the question in the right place. I think I understand your question, but I can't answer it because okay. it's not my area of facilitation. So okay. I, we can direct that question to um, Mrs. Robinson, who is our lead for career and work-based learning. Okay. And she may be able to better answer that. Okay. Yeah, I could just maybe just briefly touch upon it, but we'll get you a, an expanded answer. Okay. So um, there are courses again through Germana and uh, uh, G Cube, I think that's the company. Yeah. They're working with some of our students at North Stafford High School in the cybersecurity. Okay. And if the students take additional classes at Germana, they get a higher level credentialing. Gotcha. So we're trying to move that partnership to go beyond what the high school offers. And I use GQ because one of our students last year did complete it, mm -hmm. and then they employed them. Gotcha. So it, it's it's a real win right. for us. It's a win nice for the child. Partnership. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's where I think the conversation that I, I think you and I had at, yes. at one time. But we'll get, actually Thursday is talking about timing. We okay. actually have a meeting with Germana to talk about these programs. Okay. So I'll be able to give you guys an update. Okay, and then, so is this then available? I know it was a special partnership with North Stafford, but is the same courses and whatnot the same through the five high schools currently? I, I need to find out more. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. And then, um, for the African American History Program, um, you, I, I heard what you're saying about the, the state being encouraged in the development of a curriculum. Will there be a textbook for that? Not you said modules, so right. I didn't know if that was meaning excluding textbooks. Um, we were not planning on doing a textbook to start off with, okay. um, mainly because it wasn't in the budget. Right. Um, the modules that the VDOE will be coming out with will be a key part of that curriculum. Okay. And then uh, there are other free online resources, open educational resources that we intend to incorporate into our local curriculum okay. to be able to start the course without a textbook. Okay. Uh, if at some stage we decide that we need a textbook, then we would go and request funding and go through that adoption process. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Dr. Warner. Thank you for your presentation. Um, uh -huh. I'm very interested in the concept of the work-based internships. Um, I have a couple questions. When we used to do internships where I was a research scientist, we had many high school students come in, but we were required to pay them a stipend. We were not allowed to do them for a year. Is there going to be, um, is that going to be a requirement for these internships? Um, and also, I'll just ask all my questions. You can probably answer them. Um, Student access to internships, do we have a lot of public-private partnerships where we, we will be able to offer a substantial number of them? And what about transportation and making sure that you know, students aren't excluded for um, reasons, say, they don't have the right clothes, they don't have the transportation or whatever? Again, you know, not being the CTE facilitator, I can't comment too uh, thoroughly. Um, I know we are looking to expand all of those partnerships that we can. Um, and I think the idea behind the uh, work-based independent study, the internship, is that if a student was offered such an internship in a variety of different circumstances, they could come to the school and apply for that course and then be able to get credit for that internship. So I would anticipate that there would be um, a variety of different opportunities that kids would be given or possibly, you know, find and then be able to come back and get credit for that opportunity. Um, but Mrs. Robinson or Stephanie Ells, uh, would be able to comment on that further so we can get you more information on this. Go ahead. <coughs> yeah, so I I'm, I'm, had another question, but I'm just going to piggyback on Dr. Warner's, uh, your, your response, which is just some concern that, um, you know, students with families with certain connections are going to be more likely to get certain kinds of internships, and, and I would really like to see uh, the school division do what it can to try to level that playing field a little bit um, and, and make the effort to actually uh, 
provide those opportunities to all our students, not just the students whose family connections can make, make things happen. Um, and then uh, I noticed that the IB courses are now open to everyone without having to apply. So are we talking about students um, would then be entering the full IB program in order to take those classes? So if you don't go to Mountain View or, or, or Brook Point um, and you want to be IB, um, you no longer have to do an application? Uh, <clears throat> my understanding is the, um, the application is shifting to an application of interest so that uh, mm -hmm. it's not a barrier type of thing, but students would be able to notify if they're interested in doing the diploma program. Mm -hmm. I think students at both Brook and Mountain View have been able to take individual courses without being admitted or as part of that full IB diploma program. And what we're saying now is anyone interested in the IB diploma program uh, can submit an application of interest just to notify those IB coordinators that they would like to be part of that program and then they will work with them. Okay. I'm, Is that I, not answering your question? Just, I, just, I don't really understand what's different. Like before you had to, so now instead of a full out application, you just say you're interested, so then you'll be able to do it if you express interest? Yes, okay, so there's, yeah. there's no longer a, a criteria that you have to meet. Just if you wish to do the program, you, you may do the program. Is that right. correct? Yeah, the IB uh, diploma program. Yes. Right, okay. And um, I, I would be interested, uh, maybe the committee that, that uh, I'm spacing on, on the, the one that's uh, sort of um, measurement and whatever, accountability or I don't know, whatever, just to, to keep up on the numbers for, for all of these different programs so that we get a sense of what that looks like. Um, and then I just want to put a plug in. I think the theory of knowledge class is a really phenomenal opportunity that I would really love to see at all our schools, not just two of our schools, so that, that all our students have the opportunity to have a course like that. And that's all. Thank you. I do want to just touch upon the question about internships. Very important, your questions. Um, I don't, you think I would remember, I know I had in the budget, I don't know if it ever made the final cut, an internship coordinator because you do have to build relationships. You are right, there are some families, there are some children that we have to establish the partnership. I also, this is to all my colleagues out here, we have a lot to offer for internships. We have architects, we have planning, we have technology, we have buildings and grounds, and, you know, we have, of course, instruction. So, you know, sometimes we look far and the, and the answer is right in front of us. And the state is very flexible with the internship requirements. If you could demonstrate kids are learning and, have, and, and picking up a skill and proficiency, they could receive a credit. So um, I, I do value that you want to make sure this is very inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Jump in now. I'll wait my turn. Um, yeah, um, nice. So um, most of the questions that I've had are, have been answered. I just want, and I think Dr. Chase may have um, made this point, but I just want to make sure that we are tracking not only for governor school, because I've, I've heard you say a lot about that, but the IB and the AP program, where we're going and how we're doing. And this is just not about black and brown kids. These are poor kids, anybody, we're trying to reach equity. It's just not about a certain number of kids. It's just across the board. Um, but I do want to talk about black and brown kids when it comes to the African American history. Um, I just wanted to know, and it seems like uh, that question was answered, like this came as a module, right? That's a pilot it's for a module? It's five modules that the state has developed. <clears throat> the state developed, and you're just going to take the, the module and kind of fit it in and do a pilot program? Like who's involved in the program? The, the pilot program's happening in 16 different high school classrooms around the state uh, that they're doing that pilot right now and kind of learning and rolling out those modules and testing them out uh, and developing the resources and materials. And, and, and who, I mean, because we, we don't have a, a large minority staff, so I'm like, who is actually involved in this? Well, okay. The pilot's not here in Stafford County. It's throughout the state. 
But when you do pull it in, when you do pull it in, like how are you planning on implementing it? Just going along with what uh, the, the modules state that you need to do? Because I know the question was asked, are we going to have a book at some point in time? Right. Um, so is this somebody that intellectually is looking at this and saying yes, that has the background and saying yes, this is good, but we could add more? Because at some point, you just don't want to take the minimum, right? You want right. to be the best. And um, it, this is a conversation I was just having with someone today about African American history because African history, African American history doesn't start with African American history. It starts with African history. Right. And I was um, just dismayed. This is something I was sharing because um, I found out that, you know, not every black person that came over came as slaves. That there were free individuals in Florida and that worked a alongside Spaniards and they were free and everybody was trying to go there. And so that would be a beautiful thing uh, to put into these modules. So that's why I was inquiring about that because one thing, sometimes you think you're doing good and you bring in, you know, African American history and just to sometimes you just open up wounds on kids because they start talking about slavery. So I just wanted to know what's in there and something that is sensitive like that. You might want to look at that a little bit more and make sure that somebody that has that background brings it brings in um, their um, insight into this. Yes, once the state releases the full details, like I said, we've got these five module outlines right now that doesn't give us a whole lot of detail. Uh, once they release the information, the instructor's guide, and all the resources that they're developing through this pilot program, uh, we would have those and we would convene a committee that would then take those things and take a look at them and develop our local curriculum guide to go along with it. Good. Uh, first step would be for us to add the course to our program of studies, which is our purpose here. And then once the state releases the information, then we will convene our committee made up of a variety of people to figure out exactly and what the our priority of people here. will include um, the team that Dr. Kisner yeah, has, let, which is the equity right. team, right? And let me just start before this. This is the state for over two years has been studying it with historians, educators, Good. stakeholders all around, not even just Virginia, the country. We're actually one of the leading states to mm -hmm. offer this. And then as described, 16, we have 330 high schools in Virginia. 16 schools were selected to pilot. Um, and we will learn next year, obviously, you're going to see, if not all, most schools, high schools offering this. Um, so I just want to let you know that what's being taught in those 16 schools mm -hmm. have been well vetted with people who I would say are experts in that area. That's what I'm asking. Thank right. you. Yeah, the, the modules and everything were developed, and it came out of the recommendations from the governor's African American History Education Commission. And this is one of the things that they uh, put forward as the recommendations and that the VDOE have acted on. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Any other questions? Okay. I just have a couple. Thank you very much. Oh, I have a couple comments, oh, sorry. but just quick ones. Just quick ones. Um, I think we're all hearing um, something about, you know, the emphasis on that learning outside of the classroom and these high quality. Um, I was going to mention to Dr. Kizern, he got there, you know, is that something we want to consider in the budget? And I would just say, look at the list of those partners that we had there, you know, Sheehy, Toyota. I mean, we have some really neat opportunities for our mechanical students. They definitely don't want me in there, I can tell you. <coughs> um, but, you know, we really have a lot of partners. And right now, I, I hope from the COVID um, experience of those lists of people really maybe even creating a letter saying, we are moving to a, I'm sorry, the high quality, I don't have it up on my screen, um, to reach out to those partners who have already been reaching out um, to us in other ways and say, gosh, we think you'd be a great candidate, <laughs> you know, because a lot of times, and having been a PTO president, people just need to be asked many times. And we can put up posters, we can say join in, but you know that letter that just says, we think you'd be a great partner and we are willing to walk us you know, beside you in that. So that isn't just for you, but I just think as in general, because we just have so many people 
who really want to be there. And I think just they just need to be asked. Yeah, totally true, <laughs> because that's what I did with Toyota. I just walked up and asked. <laughs> right. So anyway, I think that's, and we think about the partnership we have with the county with our firefighting program. You know, we have started something also with the county. The county may also be an opportunity for someone who may want to be in administration. Let's start to even get that partnership too, if you want to be a planner and even I'd prefer to put us on the school side, but I'm trying to be, since we're sitting in their chambers, I'm trying to be. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot of things within the county staff too that have similar things. GIS so I think it'd be great for us to reach out and maybe um, do that as well. But I know that's not right just in your area, but mm -hmm. I appreciate your, um, your presentation. Thank you. Um, if anything else, Board members comes up, make sure that you send those, um, any questions to uh, Dr. Kisner or to Missy if something comes up between now and our next meeting mm -hmm. on that. All right. Okay. Our thank you. Thank you so much. Our next one is about the creation and calendar setting for stakeholder input regarding high school six. We also put on there, I will say elementary and middle school. This is really for our planning going forward. Um, in the past, we have, um, received community stakeholder input as we begin to get into the planning of um, the new schools, things that we learn differently. We have a prototype and then we try it once or twice. We say, ooh, gosh, lessons learned. So I was just sort of trying to um, have us begin to think, and I don't know um, if Mr. Anderson or, or Dr. Kizer, if you have sort of a sort of plan of how we may want to go about that, but I do think we need to start getting our community input. It looked like maybe coming up in the springtime would be maybe the, the time, but I will be open for your all's comments on, on that. I, I, I would like to say that Susan and I both sat on the steering committee for the Moncure Rebuild and the, we had staff there, we had community mm -hmm. members, we had Bob Thomas also sat with us um, mm -hmm. from a Board of Supervisor perspective. Mm -hmm. And we came up with what is now the new Moncure Elementary School um, with input from everyone. We had architects involved, uh, we had a consultant that was leading this, this um, yeah, the, the discussion and, 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 and mapping out what the new Moncure would look like. Are we gonna plan to do that again or are we just gonna use the same prototype yes. high school um, no we're, we're planning that and I've read those documents mm -hmm. and I saw Susan's on the cover mm -hmm. uh, Miss Randall's on the cover of the yeah yeah, yeah I think you, it's like, so it's um it's a, a good piece of work and um, the thing I would want to mention is that um, the feedback from stakeholders needs to be structured very well so we're not wasting people's time right. and um, it's really the big the big question the goals the um, the high school is going to be the first priority. Obviously, we have a lot of work to do to get that project done and open by 2025, so we're working on that right now. Uh, we would also want to be working on the middle school next year, um, earlier in the year, because we want to be ready for the CIP um, submittal in August. And so that's going to be one that takes some work and we'll want to get some feedback. We're also going to be using our um, advisory committee that's mm -hmm. already been formed to get some input from them on this, but um, I would say it just needs to be very structured and um, we're talking about that now and making those plans. There's probably less work to do with the elementary school because of the big effort that was done and we would want to go back and sort of evaluate how do, how do we think that turned out <coughs> um, as far as the, um, the Moncure Elementary School that was completed. Is, is there a plan to, um, to have one or two board members serve on that committee and maybe even have a BOS member or two? As um, well. We're early in that process, but we would want to um, structure that and, and, um, and figure out how we want to get that feedback. And, and um, I would say, yes, definitely. I mean, we want to have your feedback for sure and um, how we target the, um, the stakeholder meetings. Um, we, we still have to design that and have some internal discussions. Got it. Thanks. Sure. The thought to me was that we would be bringing this back, but I just wanted to make sure if we had a sense from the board the timing that we think we should begin to kick some of these things off. I am more of a, let's begin to, I know COVID has impacted things, but some something to, I think, also beginning to get the um, community, you know, engaged in this process. Because I do think the more success we have, um, I will tell you every year that probably any one of us has sat on the board, the war cost comes up for construction. 
I think the more that we engage our community on what we need and also what is um, what their expectations are as well, I think will help move the project forward with some buy-in by people understanding what is needed to educate the student of today. So that's just sort of the thinking. So maybe we can, you know, come back. I, we may not have to have it as a the board approve that, but I would my own personal, but I will be open to the board, is by sometime in the spring we begin to sort of map out a calendar of that, how that input will look. Is that amenable to the board? All right. Well, believe it or not, we have gotten through um, our agenda. Please note that our next meeting is a joint work session with the Board of Supervisors on December 1st. And then the regular school board meeting will be on December 10th at 7 p.m. here as well. So thank you all. You all have a good evening. Stay well. And we are adjourned.